In today's video lesson, we're going to go through the wrap tool in Onshape. The first activity we're going to do is see if we can't wrap text around a cylinder. Uh, so let's hop over to Onshape and get started. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and create my cylinder. So I'm going to put a sketch on my right plane and draw a circle off of the origin. I want to extrude that cylinder proportional to whatever text I want to put on there. So I'm going to put my last name. So I need a cylinder about this long. If I need to, I can come back in and I can change that. To be able to put the text on there for this wrap tool, I want to be able to draw out here somewhere. It really doesn't matter how far in front of the object I am, because the distance is going to get measured from the object. So I'm going to grab the plane tool and offset my front plane. I want to go ahead and pull the front plane forward until I know I'm outside of the cylinder. I can then go ahead and put my sketch on my plane and I'll select the text tool. With the text tool, it wants you to drag a window that your font is supposed to stay within. But the big thing about that is it's actually establishing the height of your font. If your font becomes longer than that, then it will go ahead and extend or push out your rectangle, but it won't change the height of it. And you do have a couple different fonts to pick from, and you can even make some of them bold. Great, so you can see there that it has actually extended the rectangle that I drew, but didn't change its height. So now I have two options. I can either go back into my cylinder and make the cylinder longer, or I can just make the text shorter. For this one, I'm just going to go ahead and make the text a little bit shorter. There we go, and for this example, that's going to be good enough. I'm going to go ahead and finish my text, and this is where I'm going to use the Wrap tool. And the Wrap tool is underneath the Transform tool. So I'll go ahead and grab Wrap. I'll select my font as the tool that I want. For the target, I'm going to go ahead and select my cylinder. And the default right now is Surface. I want to change it from Surface to Solid. The thickness that's written here, think of kind of like a shell thickness. So it's in addition to whatever your target was. So whatever number you place there is the distance from the object or from your target to the outside of that wrap. If you prefer your wrap to go into it, to be an engrave instead of an emboss, then you can select Remove. And the thickness is the same way. It's measured from whatever target face you actually picked on. Okay, so is there anything else special that this wrap tool can do? You do have the option in position to be able to do several different things. You can actually shift around whatever your original object was, and you can also rotate it. That really comes in handy when you're doing several things that you might use the wrap tool for. Um, is there anything else that the wrap tool can be used for? Well, let's go back to when my name was too long. While you're wrapping, if there's anything that actually extends out past the object, the wrap tool has the option to trim that as well. So I'll go ahead and pick my font, pick my target, change it to a solid. And right now you can see that it's creating it as a new part, at least for the N. Um, the O is partially onto it. If you say select trim to target, it will remove everything that's outside of the target face that you actually selected. So the wrap tool can really come in handy when you've got things like textures or something that's embossed or engraved into a cylindrical surface. Uh, but unfortunately, wrap is limited to cylindrical surfaces. One thing I did want to mention about cylinders is it is okay if the cylinder is concave instead of convex. It'll produce the same kind of results, either as an emboss where it comes away from it or as an engrave. For this next one, we're going to start off the same way with a cylinder. We're going to go ahead and draw a shape on it this time rather than the text tool. And once we have one wrap, we're going to go ahead and circular pattern that around.
Great, that's pretty cool. I hope you can create something that looks similar to that. The problem, unfortunately, is when I try to circular pattern that object. For whatever reason, when I try to circular pattern something that has been trimmed or something that goes all the way to the outside edges, it shows the circular pattern but shows it as red and it won't actually produce a positive results. So unfortunately, I can't use a wrap that got trimmed and circular pattern it and I can't have one that even goes out to the edges. I've got it to work every once in a while, but most of the time it doesn't like that either. So if you have a wrapped face that you would like to circular pattern or pattern around the cylinder, uh, make sure it doesn't go out to the edges and don't use the trim inside wrap. Uh, most of the time it's fine after that point. Just make sure you're changing it from part pattern to feature pattern. And the axis is just going to be the edge of the cylinder. And then it seems to pattern just fine. When it comes to 3D modeling software packages, you'll find you end up learning new things all the time. At the beginning when I started making this video, I didn't have a way of being able to wrap an object to a cylindrical plane that got trimmed and then circular pattern it. It just wouldn't do it. But as you keep playing around with it, sometimes you find some better workaround. You find some other ways to try to get it to do what you want, and I have found one. So I am going to go ahead and do wrap select my tool and my target, say that it's going to be a solid and trim to target. So it does go to the edges, which is exactly what I wanted it to originally do. It's just when I go to circular pattern it and I change it to feature pattern, most of the time when I pick that feature and the axis, it turns red and it says that it won't do it. I have found a way to get it to do it. And I think each software package is that way. You kind of just have to play every once in a while. And sometimes you just kind of fall into a happy little accident and you'll get it to do what you want it to do. So when I go to wrap that, I'm not actually going to do it as an add. I'm going to do it as a new. And as soon as it's a new, it's a completely different feature. It's not tied on to that other one at all. Now if I go to circular pattern it, I'm going to circular pattern a part instead of a feature. If I do it as a part and select that part, along this axis, it does it just fine. It has absolutely no problem. Um, whatever the problem was to begin with, it, it didn't like that it was trimmed to those edges. But as soon as it became a completely separate part, then it was fine. Then the problem is now I have all these separate parts and I would like for them to be all one part. Well, that's where this Boolean operation will come in. This Boolean operation will allow me to union merge, subtract, intersect. I want the union. As I come down here to my parts and I start picking on two parts, it will then start combining them. And now that boolean has combined all of them into one part. So that's a workaround. Instead of allowing it to add in the original wrap, I've gone ahead and said I wanted to create a new part then I went ahead and patterned the parts and then added them or merged them all back together. For this next example, you can see that we have a cylinder that has a slot engraved into it. Once one slot is engraved, we're going to center rectangular pattern that and then circular pattern that around. So we're going to start out with a wrapped slot that's in the middle of the cylinder. Let's see if we can't knock this one out together. Let's go ahead and start off with our cylinder. We'll offset our front work plane. We'll create a new sketch on our front plane. And I want to create a slot. Unfortunately, in this software, I haven't found a slot tool, one that will create one kind of for me. So I'm going to have to build it on my own. It's going to be built out of a rectangle and two three-point arcs, but I would kind of like it into the middle. So to be able to do that, I'm going to use or project geometry of both ends. I'll then go ahead and draw myself a line from the center of one end to the center of the other. I'm going to highlight everything that I've created and make that all construction lines. Now 
Now I can go ahead and do a center rectangle. I'm then going to go ahead and use the three point arc to put an arc on both ends that are tangent to the outside edges. And that really is the definition of a slot. I have a rectangular body with two tangented arcs on both ends. I'll go ahead and wrap that as an engrave. And now I want to go ahead and create a linear pattern. I want to change it from part pattern to feature pattern. I'll go ahead and select the slot as my feature. For the direction, I can pick any of the lines that go along the edge of the cylinder. I'll put in a distance that's going to work. And for this example, I'm going to go ahead and select center so that my object is in the center of the pattern. I can now go ahead and circular pattern both the wrap and the linear pattern around the cylinder. Remember to make sure that you change it from part pattern to feature pattern. And I want to select both the wrap and the linear pattern. And then the axis of the pattern is going to be anywhere on the cylinder. And that should create the slot pattern for me. Okay, another update, at least something else that I have learned since I started making this video. Uh, I didn't think that there was a slot tool built into the software, and there is. I thought it was going to be under the rectangular tool or the circular tool, and it's actually under offset. It's offset from a line. Um, so there is a slot tool, which you have to have a line already built. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line. Once you've got a line, you can offset that. So I'm going to come in and say offset. You select the line, and as soon as you do, it will create a slot for you. You then get to go ahead and put on a diameter on the end that will tell the ends how big to be. So whatever length you want between your center points, and then whatever spacing you want from top to bottom, and it will create a slot for you. Um, there are times that I think I still would like to make the slot myself, especially if I want to try to balance it off of a center point and use a center rectangle, uh, but there is a slot tool. The next example I want to show you is this cone shape, and it looks like the wrap tool was used for it, but unfortunately we know that the wrap tool only works for cylindrical objects, and not conical objects or spherical ones. So I have to do these just a little bit different. I'm not going to be able to use the wrap tool at all. I'm just going to have to use some other tools to create things that are similar to wrap. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create that truncated cone shape that we actually want to send that slot to. Great, and just as we've done in the past, I'm going to grab my plane and offset the front plane out here somewhere. And I'm going to go ahead and create my slot. Unfortunately, the wrap tool won't work here. If I go ahead and select wrap and select my entities, since it's not a cylindrical shape, it won't allow me to pick it. So I want to create something that gives me the illusion of a wrap, an emboss, or an engrave, however you want to consider it, but it's not going to be done with the wrap tool. I'm actually going to use the extrude tool for it. In the extrude tool, I'll go ahead and pick my entities. I'm going to say remove because it is going to be a cut and I'm going to go up to next. What that's going to do is that's going to take my shape and find the shape that it actually runs into. So it sees that it doesn't run into a flat shape. It does run into a cone shape or a conical shape. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and put in an offset distance. And that offset distance is going to be however deep I want to engrave into the part. 
I'm going to go ahead and select this black arrow to change it in the opposite direction. Right now it was 0.1 away from the object, and I wanted it to go 0.1 into the object. And that's really it. Now I can go ahead and circular pattern that just as I've done the other ones. Then it'll give me the illusion of something that's been wrapped. It hasn't truly been wrapped. It was sent straight into the object. So the extrusion at the bottom and at the top aren't wrapped into it. They're just sent straight in. It did go ahead and curve it. So this body isn't flat. This body does have a curve shape to it. It just has to do with the ends aren't quite what a wrap would do. And I don't also have the ability to be able to rotate it and shift it and all those extra things. But it does at least give me the illusion of something that was wrapped. For this next one, the extrude tool wasn't going to work exactly the way we wanted. It worked perfectly for being able to go into it or engrave, but something that's on the outside of a surface, of something at least that's not cylindrical, that looks like a wrap, it's going to have to be done a little bit differently. Uh, let's go ahead and start it off the same way we did the last one. Okay, so we've got the exact same thing. We have a conical or cone shape, and we have our slot that we want to send to it, but instead of being an engrave, we want it to be an emboss. We want it to come off of it. I'd love to be able to say that we could just say extrude, pick the shape, and say up to next, and it will do it if that's what I wanted. But since I want it to appear that it was wrapped, this offset distance won't work for me. If I say offset distance, and I put a distance in there, Right now that's going to be 0.1 away from the object. So it's actually creating a new solid 0.1 away from the object. If I change it the other way, it is doing it 0.1, it's just doing it 0.1 inside of the object. So it's going 0.1 inside. And so this isn't exactly what I want. I'm going to be able to do it with the up to next, I'm just not going to do an offset distance. I'm going to allow it to go ahead and create a solid. Once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and circular pattern it. Great, so the only thing that's wrong is these are all sticking too far away from the object. So what I need to do is I actually need to trim all of these all off, or cut them all off. And I'm going to do it with another revolve. I'm going to go back into Sketch 1. I'm going to think about that shell thickness, or that shell distance, and I'm just going to offset that away from the original face that's there. Once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and create a shape that's going to revolve cut everything that I don't want to stay. I'll go ahead and turn back on Sketch 1 so I can use the second part that I just drew. I'll do a revolve, select the shape that I just drew. My revolve axis is going to be anywhere on the cone shape. And instead of it being an add, I'm going to do it as a remove. And what that's going to do is knock off all of those edges just as if it was an extrude with an offset. And I get similar results. And again, it's not exactly a wrap. It's not exactly the definition of a wrap anyways. And because it just has straight edges as it goes into it, rather than wrapping onto the cone shape, since OnShape doesn't have the ability to wrap to anything that's not a cylinder, I have to have some workarounds that allow me to use designs that are similar to a wrap without using the wrap tool. Great, and hopefully that's given you the idea of some of the things that the wrap tool can do, and unfortunately some of the limitations or things that it can't do, and how you can create some things that are at least similar to it, even though the wrap tool can't create everything that you might want to use the wrap tool for.